Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt. This is my wife, Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching Oppenheimer. What do you know about this movie? This is new. <laughs> yes, a very new movie. Uh, very new for us, uh, especially for the channel. So this is about the atomic bombs or yeah. making of. Yeah, uh, the Manhattan Project. I don't really know much about the Manhattan Project. Uh, I don't really know much about Oppenheimer. I know the use of the bombs at some point in World War II, uh, but I think there's gonna be a lot of information that's new for us to experience. Obviously, this is Christopher Nolan, amazing director. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we have Killian Murphy, who we've seen on the channel, um, as well as Emily Blunt. Yeah. I don't know who else is in this movie. I think there are a decent amount of people in this. It'll probably be like almost every scene there's some big name actor in it. Yeah, um, so we thought it was timely to watch this. We're doing a lot of like war on the channel um, and it's Oscar season. We figured we should watch this because it seems like this has been doing really well so far. Yeah, uh, everyone involved in this has been uh, knocking it out of the park in award season. So not sure how it's gonna shape up with Oscars, but yeah, we're doing a lot of war on the channel with uh, Masters of the Air, which is Again, focus on World War II. We just watched Patton, which is World War II. Also, this week, uh, we watched Blast from a Past, Blast from the Past. Yeah. Which I was really excited to share with you. Yeah. And it, you know, that's about the Cold War, but it still involves like the fear of like nuclear war and like uh, fallout and- uh, Yeah, the fallout shelters. Yeah, and like a, a winter or whatever, like- a, Radiation, radiation and yeah. stuff. So it was just a funny combo. Not necessarily planned, but it just worked out that way. Yeah. But I'm super excited. I mean, we love Christopher Nolan. I think the last movie that we saw for Christopher Nolan on the channel is Memento. Yeah, and it's been quite a while. We've seen almost everything by him. So if it's not on the channel, we've probably already seen it. I think yeah. the only one recent that we have not seen is Tenet. Oh, okay, yeah. And I don't know. I, I heard mixed things about that. I still would probably want to watch it at some point, but it's not at the top of my list right now. But everything else, Christopher Nolan, we have seen, I believe. I think so as well. So I'm really excited for something new. Yeah, I'm excited for this. Um, I know this is gonna be a, uh, quite a long film for us, uh, for the channel, but I'm excited. Yeah, we've seen quite a few very long movies in the past couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I'm expecting this to still be amazing. You might see us in different outfits at some point throughout <laughs> the movie, just because we can't film that long of a movie in one sitting. Yeah. The only other thing that I believe is true is that there's no CGI in the movie or very little. Oh, So okay. I think Christopher Nolan very specifically wanted to try to do things practically, which is insane about a movie, you know, creating an atomic bomb. Yeah, all right. So that's why like people now joke, oh, you know, don't let Christopher Nolan, he said he might want to do like a horror movie and people are like, don't let him because he's going to just like summon a demon for real instead of using CGI. So that's now an ongoing joke. Okay. But All right. uh, yeah, super excited. Yeah, me too. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on our Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the movie. Jeez, like the sun. Jeez, what an intense start. Members of the security board. How long did he testify? Robert Downey. The whole curing took a month. An ordeal. Well, I've only read the transcripts. We're going from black and white to color. Useless in the lab. Dang. Start again. I need to go to the lecture, sir. Let's go. Oh, no, not you, Oppenheimer. Damn, what? You all would have missed it if it weren't for him. Cyanide. Are you killing your teacher? Einstein's opened the door. Now we are peering through, seeing a world inside our world. Damn, he's just like a prisoner of his own mind. He's gotta get rid of that apple before he yeah. actually kills his teacher. Niels, meet J. Robert Oppenheimer. 
I heard you give the same question. At question. Harvard, yes, and you ask the same question. Don't need that. Get to Germany, study under Max Born, learn the ways of theory. I'll send word. Oh. Can you hear the music, Robert? Yes, I can. Okay, so he's going to Germany. The sound in this. Just absolutely overwhelming what's constantly going on. Yeah. I actually met Robert in my capacity as board member, determined to get him to run the Institute. So he comes in to play after. I'd love to introduce you. I've known him for years. This is the timeline that weirds my brain out. Right, you think Albert Einstein, Einstein comes so much later. Yeah. This is one of the most prestigious appointments in the country. Yes, it was a great commute. <laughs> That's why I'm considering it. Wasn't expecting a consider. Yeah, hard bargainer. Time in Europe, you seem to meet with a wide range of other countries' physicists. Any Russians? Fear of the Russians? I'm an American myself. How surprising. Well, let me know if you need any help with the English. A little nervous. Frankfurt verschiedene Energien. Der Verbindung ist auch Banane in der relative Translation. What's he saying? Wasn't expecting the German. Oppenheim. I caught your lecture on molecules. Caught some of it. Right. We're a couple of New York Jews. How do you know Dutch? Well, that was Dutch. This is German. You have to seek out Heisenberg. Right. Heisenberg. Behind the quantum world, there still hides a real world in which causality holds. But just this like chase for intellect. As you get home. Did you ever encounter Heisenberg again? You might say our paths crossed. Accepted positions at both Caltech and up at Berkeley. Both. He must be Oppenheimer. Yes. I hear you want to start a school of quantum theory. Josh Hartnett. I'm teaching something no one here has dreamt of. But once people start hearing what you can do with it, there's no going back. Mm. I like how he is very much theory and not like the, he doesn't like the practical aspect. Man, just one student. I have a grasp on the basics. And you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Quantum mechanics says it's both. How can it be both? It can't. It can't. But it is. Ooh, growing. When gravity starts winning, it contracts. See where the math takes us. Me? Yes, you. Your math is better than mine. <laughs> the FBI was taking license plates outside suspect communist gatherings, and his name popped up. No way. Frank. Man, the FBI is looking out for communists. This is my little brother Frank, and oh. this is still Jackie. Hello, still Jack. <laughs> they think that socialism is a bigger threat than fascism. Not for long. Look at what the Nazis are doing to the Jews. I have to do something. Interesting. The bigger the star, the more violent its demise. If we can get published, then perhaps one day an astronomer finds one. Talking about a black hole? Oh, I've read Das Kapital, all three volumes. Does that count? It would make you better at the most party members. <laughs> Ownership is theft. Property. I'm sorry, I read it in the original German. <laughs> Dang. Why limit yourself to one dogma? You're a physicist, you pick and choose rules. Oh, okay. <laughs> and now I am become the destroyer of worlds. This is a kink. What a line, too. I feel like I've heard that so many times. Mm -hmm. I haven't joined the party, Frank. And I don't think she should have convinced you to either. Oh. You're happy. I'm happy. Interesting. So Oppenheimer has a communist brother and he blames Jackie for turning him into a communist? Yeah. To combine physics and New Mexico. One of my favorite places in the world, Los Alamos. I didn't expect to see you today. <laughs> Were they not holding hands or something? <laughs> she did not want to hold hands. <laughs> Alvarez? That's his friend, right? They've done it. Han and Strassman in Germany. They split the uranium nucleus. Oh. Bombarded it with neutrons. It's a nuclear fission. They did it. They split the atom. Damn, this is like breaking news. Can't be done. There's just one problem. Where? Next door. These fission pulses, they're massive. Damn, he just straight up did it? Bomb. Alvarez, a bomb. Damn, they went straight to bomb. I'll sit in, not this one. Oh. 
little special, I guess. Wow, iced out. Yeah. Oh, Harlan, our paper, it's in print. You've been upstage. Starting. Matter is solid. Stop my body passing through yours. It's got some charm to him. You're married to Dr. Harrison. Not very. Not very? To my ranch with friends. You should come. I'm in with your husband. Because you know it won't make a bit of difference. Yeah, right? What a romantic. Joe got himself killed first time he popped his head out of the trench. Jeez. My husband offered both our futures to stop one fascist bullet from embedding itself in a mud bag. At least you didn't bring me flowers. <laughs> what do any of you have in common with farm laborers and dock workers? They won't let me bring you onto the project because of this shit. Oh, wow. Do I really care what I do? Because you're not just self-important, you're actually important. He's too smart, too influential. If you could just be a little more pragmatic, I have to worry it's done. Wow. Then welcome to the war. Dang. The most respected scientific voice in the world. That's why I asked him to run the Institute. Yeah, pretty simple. Get the best. Isotopes are less useful than electronic components, but more useful than a sandwich. Dang. Look at this man who saw so much be so blind. I was not expecting so much politics mm -hmm. and how they play into so many decisions. I'm in. Let's celebrate. Yeah, who's taking care of the baby? Shouldn't you go to him? I have been going to him all fucking day. Didn't she have some comment about being like just a housewife or something, reduced to a housewife? Yeah. Does Kitty know you here? Yes, of course she knows. We're awful people. Selfish, awful. I assume he's gone a lot and he's about to be gone for even longer. We're putting together a group to study We shouldn't be doing anything. You should. Lawrence won't get this done. You will. It's like he was made for this moment. Just needs to accept it. I'm Colonel Groves. This is Lieutenant Colonel Nichols. I have that dry cleaning. <laughs> There's so many people I recognize from like other movies playing such small roles. Well, I'd hate to see how you treat a humble physicist. Oh, if I ever meet one, I'll let you know. <laughs> suspected communist. I'm a New Deal Democrat. I said suspected. <laughs> Why aren't you a general? They're making me one for this. Nobel Prize for making a bomb. Alfred Nobel invented dynamite. Oh, wow. Who do you think they put in charge? Werner Heisenberg. You know his work. I know him, just like I know Walter Bolton. Dang. Hitler called quantum physics Jewish science. So blinded by hate that he's denied Heisenberg proper resources. No way. It's my job to say no to you when you're wrong. So you have the job now? Uh, I'm considering it. <laughs> Oppenheimer couldn't run a hamburger stand. I couldn't, but I can run the Manhattan Project. What an intense, crazy conversation. Yeah, this was my favorite conversation so far. And it comes together here, a secret laboratory. In the middle of nowhere, if you want security, build a town, build it fast. No way. Welcome to Los Alamos. Nothing, 40 miles. I have to find the perfect spot for success. Oh, I just got chills. Yeah. Build him a town. As much as you like. Until you feel my boot on your balls. <laughs> Before the Nazis do. Oh my God. How about because this is the most important fucking thing to ever happen in the history of the world? Yeah, get on board. Good cop, bad cop there. Failing a security check is not going to be good for a career even after the war. They need us. Until they don't. Oof. Ooh. Oh man, even the music slowed down with that. You spread too thin. So you take theoretical. I'm not coming here. What? Where would you go? I don't wish the culmination of three centuries of physics to be a weapon of mass destruction. I was waiting for that viewpoint. Yeah, it's such exciting science, but the outcome is death. The Nazis can't. <laughs> You're a scientist. Groves is insisting we join. Tell Groves to go shit in his hat. I wonder what K6 is. Then I calculated the chain reaction. I found a rather troubling possibility. Well, there's not much common ground between you two. That's why I should get his view. Important enough to go to Einstein. Whose work is this? Teller's. Criticality. But this time, the chain reaction doesn't stop. It would ignite the atmosphere. Whoa. Might start a chain reaction that destroys the world. No way. About the only thing you and I have in common is disdain for mathematics. 
<laughs> you share your findings with the Nazis, so neither side destroys the world. Interesting. They find out it's a death sentence for the whole planet. It is yours, not mine. This is Oppenheimer's burden. Teller's wrong. He's wrong. Seeing Teller's wrong? I think so. The chances of an uncontrolled nuclear reaction are near zero. Near zero. Can it be exactly zero? Until they actually detonate one of these things, the best assurance you're going to get is this. Near zero. Ugh. So you're saying there's a chance. Apparently, the government's not sharing any research with the Russians. I didn't think they wanted to pass on. Are you asking? That would be treason. Yes, of course. Talking about giving information to the Russians? Nothing in our long-standing friendship led me to believe that Chevalier was actually seeking information. Hmm. I don't know about that. Isn't there someone we can call who knows what really happened? Tell her. Robert built that damn place. He was founder, mayor, sheriff. This could be very bad for him. Yeah. She's had a rough time since the very beginning. A vast and sudden chemical reaction. Biggest man-made explosion in history. No way. Here's the amount of uranium oak which refined all of last month. Okay. We compact the atoms together under great pressure to induce a fusion reaction. Generate enough force to fuse hydrogen atoms. A small fission bomb. A small bomb makes big bomb? Klaus Fuchs. How long have you been British? Since Hitler told me I wasn't German. Huh. Oh, wow. And I thought of a way to reduce support staff. I've offered jobs to all the wives of men, librarians. Oh. <laughs> I don't like it. You don't like anything enough for that to be a fair test. Top men only. I'd like to bring my brother here. No. Yeah, definitely not. There's no proof there was a spy at Los Alamos. Robert. Yeah, this is getting dicey. The first self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction. The hell is that? I asked if I could type. Can you? Harvard forgot to teach that on the graduate chemistry course. <laughs> Nobody can work under these conditions. You know what? Generalissimo, I quit. Uh-oh. Better off without him. Are you? We'll have him killed. I was just kidding. <laughs> Are you? Perhaps you can get me my security clearance so I can perform this miracle for you. It's insane that the person running this has not been cleared yet. So much going on. <laughs> Share a few things that General Groves told me not to. Sorry, General, I said I understood. Not that I agreed. <laughs> Our security was tight as former Colonel Nichols well knows. Our security was as tight as it could be given the personalities involved, but attempts were made. Need to talk about Gene Tatlock? Oh, Gene. It's important you not maintain or renew any questionable associations. I hate this guy. Yeah. You felt that such contacts were potentially dangerous. Being followed. I've had a lot of secrets in my head for a long time. Oh, is this for Jean? Where did you go? I can't tell you. Why not? Because sure. you're coming. Yeah, exactly. She was extremely unhappy. Did you find out why she had to see you? Oh. Naked. Because she was still in love with me. Yeah, right in front of his wife? Spent the night together, didn't you? Yeah. Jeez. Letting them pick our lives to pieces. Why won't you fight? So much turmoil just in like their personal lives when they're trying to do something so gargantuan. He had no intention of leaving any witness left to prosecute. <laughs> now the FBI talked him down, but that's the man you're dancing with. It's a hunter. This is a man who has killed communists with his own hands. I'm not the judge of who should or should not have information. It's my business to stop it from going through illegally. Uh oh no. So Eltonton made his approach through a member of the faculty here at Berkeley. Oh my God. But there, there, there may have been more than one person involved. You're just unleashing this guy. I'm not formulating a plan. I'll just have to digest the whole thing. That was so bad. They felt my time would be better spent in Europe. Who did? General Groves. Oh. Groves got him out of there. 
He seemed more focused on heavy water. As a moderator, he took a wrong turn. Oh. So could you could you give us a moment? I don't think he wants to help. <laughs> Little hat. You are an American Prometheus. Yeah, respect it, and then they'll hunt him down. I found her yesterday in the bath. depend on you has to just keep going yeah no one is leaving los alamos he's got to get everyone working together while also not letting people work together stay here research what you want fusion the hydrogen bomb whatever you're a politician now robert hey one hour you and me so the super was under development on your watch at los alamos kind of Current arsenal of atomic bombs. You, you drown in ten feet of water, or, or ten thousand. What, what's the difference? You're still drowning. I'm just not sure you want to go down this road, Lewis. With respect, we are the advisory committee. We will give them our advice. Just what a mess. I know. Who can build the biggest bomb? A V2 rocket headed England. Can't help but imagine what it will be for such an enemy rocket to carry an atomic. Oh, it's drowning. How was Mr. Borden able to put together such a detailed indictment? It appears to have had unlimited access. He wasn't even a government employee? They won't fear it until they understand it. And they won't understand it until they've used it. Our work here will ensure a peace mankind has never seen. It's a lot of hope in humanity. Oh, oh. so close. July. Heaven till July. But I need my brother. Why does he need his brother so much? I knew my brother could be trusted. Absolutely. And you felt your judgment was sound on who on the team could be trusted. Really think there's a spy. Oh! We leave for Washington in the morning. We're gonna give him a date. Man, my timelines are always so off. Like, the fact that Hitler's already dead. Mm-hmm. You gotta sink to this. I guess Germany. That's not how weapons manufacture works. You can't really stop this. Military targets. But there aren't any big enough. Vital war plant. Now we could issue a warning to reduce civilian casualties. Warn them before? Once to show the weapons power, and a second to show that we can keep doing this until they surrender. Dang. I've taken Kyoto off the list. My wife and I honeymooned there. Oh my god, that's... You took it off the list because you've been there? Can you give us a working bomb by then? Absolutely. <laughs> we will test fire before the conference. So many, like, insanely different angles that you have to think about and conversations to have to do something that's never been done before. Don, we're firing on the 15th. The 15th? That's the 15th. 15th. His brother's very useful. Yeah. I was, like, really curious why he was bringing him in. I would not want to be the driver. I would do what's safe and then double it. <laughs> the pressure. I wonder how much exposure to radiation they were getting. Doing this? At this point in time. Okay, stop, stop. Everybody, mattresses. Mattresses? It's gone our way. I'm taking the sheets. It's already coming. I thought this would be like at the very end of the movie or something. I don't know what I thought it would look like, but it wasn't this. Just this big ball. Yeah, I don't wires. know. I know the implosion lenses will work. If we fire these detonators and they don't trigger a reaction, two years worth of plutonium will be scattered. Oh my god. Success advice. Jesus. Just betting on it. So it didn't work in tests, but he's like, I know it's going to work. You know I know this desert. Storm cools overnight just before dawn. Storm breaks. Sign your forecast. If you're wrong, I'll hang you. <laughs> I'll hang you? What did Fermi mean by uh, atmospheric ignition? Oh, you don't know that? Chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world. Chances are near zero. Near. <laughs> near zero. Yeah, we thought the same. What do you want from theory alone? Zero would be nice. <laughs> Ugh, I'm so anxious. It's letting up. It's letting up as it's pouring rain. 
Turn the cars. Ready for emergency evacuation. Get out of there. Yeah, the tension that this movie builds, even with something that you you know the outcome. 20 minutes. 20 minutes, everyone. Man, just sitting down watching. Robert, try not to blow up the world. Yeah, that's gonna stick in the back <laughs> of his head. Vote is dropped below one vote. You hit that button, you abort. Oh, don't be so shaky. Is it right then? Yeah. <laughs> 60 seconds to detonation. For your glasses. Oh, put those on. What are you doing? One. Wow. I like the silence of this. Mm -hmm. Look at that. And now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Jeez. Ah! <laughs> Just the culmination of years. So many brilliant people. Well, I don't know. He just said to tell you to bring in the sheets. He did it. If they detonated too high in the air, the blast wouldn't be as powerful. We'll take it from here. Yeah, now he's like useless. Should I come with you to Washington? What for? What for? Well, you keep informed. Of course. No. As best I can. Which is zero. Wow. Just the immediate cut. All war becomes unthinkable. Until somebody builds a bigger one. Like an H-bomb. I thought they would call. It's only the fifth. In Japan, it's the sixth. Just the anticipation of what he created finally being used. Yeah, congrats. It went all right. Apparently, it went with a tremendous bang. I mean, his hope is to stop war with this. On the greatest scientific gamble in history. Can't even imagine what type of emotions Oppenheimer would be going through. Right? I feel like we saw this scene. It's too soon to determine what the results of the bombing are, but I'll bet the Japanese didn't like it. The first like trippy thing I feel like happening in his reality. I just wish we had it in time to use against the Germans. Man, the sound. Yeah. Oh, blinding. Oh. That was um, wild. Yeah. Oh, that was a body. What should we do with it? Give it back to the Indians. We have to build up Los Alamos, not shut it down. You wanted this to be the end. It's just the start. I feel that I have blood on my hands. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, this is such an odd conversation. They care who dropped it. I did. I have no idea how to take that. Was that like, I get the credit? Or was that, you don't get the blame? So those are two different things. Don't let that cry baby back in here. Okay, yeah. there you go. Damn, they did not make him look good at all. His brother was blacklisted by every university in the country. No way. He knew his phone was tapped. It was followed everywhere. Trash pick through. Damn. Maybe he thought fame could actually protect him. Yeah, they're not gonna take him out. <laughs> there were many who thought themselves lucky, but they died anyway. Days or weeks later. I like how it's just focusing on Oppenheimer. You can hear just like the wincing. Nobody knows what you believe. Do you? I mean, I feel like he's torn. It's more than, more than, more than when we all know. 
that it's Strauss. Yeah, seems like it. Wake up! It is Strauss! Why won't you fight him? Yeah, someone listen to her. We need a systematic destruction of Oppenheimer's credibility so he can never again speak on matters of national security. No way. Wow. Rob will have security clearance to examine Oppenheimer's file. Defense counsel will not. No way. No audience, no reporters, no burden of proof. Just silently take him out. If you do decide to appeal, then they'll have to send you a copy. What a destruction of Oppenheimer. We'd like to know what document Mr. Rob is quoting from and if we might be furnished with a copy. The document is classified, Mr. Damn, that's so dirty. Why lie? Well, clearly with the intention of not revealing who the intermediary was. Is he still your friend? Yes. Oh my god, this is frustrating. Dr. Lawrence has apparently come down with colitis. So we'll proceed with William Borden instead. Okay. The witness wrote this letter on his own initiative, laying out evidence that has already been before the board. This is so dirty. J. Robert Oppenheimer is an agent of the Soviet Union. Come on. Right in the record. Most of the scientists in this country would prefer to see Mr. Straws completely out of government. Oh. Excuse me, gentlemen, if I become stirred, but I am. Fuck yeah. Straws was able to find a few ambitious men who also disagreed with Oppenheimer's positions and envied him. Oh my god. Dr. Oppenheimer had no responsibility in the selection or the clearance of Klaus Fuchs, did he? No, none at all. It was good on Garrison. This is rough, though. A man appointed not by the board, but by Louis Straws. Damn, this guy's just dropping bombs. Intellectual communist and you're playing all regular commie. <laughs> well, I couldn't answer that one. <laughs> I couldn't either. <laughs> Ooh, got someone. I left my country never to return. Damn it, I happen to love this country. Then tell them to go to hell. <laughs> Why would Hill come here to tear me down? Do people need a reason to do the right thing? Oh. As he sees it. Papa never knows how to manipulate his own. Wow, from that moment too. Deterred by any moral qualms. The balance between these weapons and atomic weapons is part of our arsenal. What do moral qualms have to do with that? Excuse me? Would you be supportive of the dropping of a hydrogen bomb on Hiroshima? And this was not a problem with which I was confronting. Well, I'm confronting you with it now. Ooh, I want Oppenheimer to just punch that guy. <laughs> we set forth our... Oh, no, you, 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 you! I'm asking... Oh my god, let him talk. I would have done anything I was asked to do. Well, then you would have killed the H bomb too. Take a breath. Our efforts would only fuel their efforts just as it had with the atomic bomb. Exactly. Jeez. I gave him exactly what he wanted. He should be thanking me. Well, he's not. Damn. <laughs> we have voted two to one to deny. What a shock. They had it rigged from the start. Don't take out the sheets. No victory. I'm denied. I'm afraid so, sir. All right. Good. I don't know you, but fuck you. Uh, Kennedy. Oh. John F. Kennedy. No way. <laughs> Kennedy? I'm glad I don't remember history, because that was shocking. <laughs> they didn't talk about you at all. Is it possible they spoke about something uh, more important? Oh my god. This guy just cooked them. Now it's your turn to deal with the consequences of your achievement. Whoa. Just remember, it won't be for you. It will be for them. <laughs> yeah, no, she did not forget. We thought we might start a chain reaction that would destroy the entire world. I believe we did. Jeez. Man, what an ending. All right, that was Oppenheimer. What'd you think? That was incredible. Yeah, I feel like this is gonna take a long time to process. Yeah. And I feel like I already wanna watch it again. Mm -hmm. But that had some brilliant moments throughout, as well as just 
being a great movie altogether. Yeah. Um, I want to say the second half of this film for me was like the highlight. I agree completely. The standout moments. I mean, that speech there at the end by Einstein, like almost brought tears to my eyes. Yeah. And that just like tied into, you know, Oppenheimer clearly in the future. They aged everyone perfectly throughout. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Like. Yeah. Um, so just Einstein's uh, viewpoint on that. Also with Oppenheimer's just like dread of what he achieved, I guess. Yeah, that was, that stuck with me too. What Einstein said was when you have to deal with the consequences of your achievements, I think that's what he said. Yeah. Which is wild to think about. And I think when it comes to science, that's a huge part of it. Cause you know, they're making strides in all of these things. I mean, for what the years and the money and everything that it took for Oppenheimer to create this bomb, like it's incredible what that they were able to accomplish, but the consequences of that was death for yeah. 220,000 people, I think they said. Yeah, and I don't even know if that's the one that the number of people who died over the years later oh, or yeah, in the I'm, moment. I'm sure. So I, I don't know, I doubt that's the total no. toll of it, but it was interesting to see Oppenheimer so optimistic. It was definitely a situation where if he didn't do it, then the likelihood was that the Nazis would achieve it. And yeah. so that was the big fear of if we don't do this, someone worse will. Uh, but he was so hopeful that if we create a weapon that can essentially destroy anything and everything, then there would be no point to war. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe it was Teller. There are so many people in this movie. Yeah. and. I'm sure we missed so much and I'm sure so much went over our heads and stuff, but Teller um, wanted to build or focus on the H-bomb and you know, Oppenheimer was kind of saying his hopes for what would happen. And I think Teller was the one who was like, yeah, until someone builds a bigger bomb. Mm -hmm. And it just became this like never ending race to who, who can build the thing that can destroy all of us the fastest. And Oppenheimer's, I guess, hopes and goals of it just kind of being this perfect thing that would stop all war didn't really materialize. You know, obviously I think it showed how much regret he had in his success. Oppenheimer was also very torn. And I think that's why it was maybe easier to kind of pick his whole story apart because he did think of all things or explore different ideas and topics. And he wasn't a hundred percent sure what to do. And it's like, how can you be opposed to something yet work so hard on achieving that? And so it's like, it was just so very complicated and that almost became his downfall, at least when he got set up essentially by Strauss to kind of just poke holes in everything. And I think, you know, uh, there's definitely a part of him that, you know, was happy that he achieved something so scientifically, scientifically, amazing if that's a way to put it but then the the fear of it just being used really took a toll on him and so i feel like it was a complex movie because oppenheimer was a complex person yeah no i completely agree i definitely agree with you that i think the back half of this movie was more of a highlight we had to take a break um so it's been a couple of days for us to watch this uh, but the first half, it definitely was not what I was anticipating. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't like anticipating something like all about war or something or all about Oppenheimer. Um, but I think I was caught off guard by, I would say, heavy focus on like the communism aspect. Yeah, which I mean, obviously ties in at the end of the movie and why they played so heavily into it in the beginning. Yeah, exactly. The end of the movie was so amazing. Like this last hour was so amazing. I think because the first two hours were so uh, dedicated to kind of building up to this anticipation mm -hmm. because it didn't focus as much on the science as I thought it would. Mm -hmm. And we jumped around a lot. I mean, there was different uh, perspectives. I think black and white was Strauss and color was Oppenheimer. We yeah. jumped around time a lot. Yeah. 
This is Christopher Nolan. He likes to fuck with time and go around all, all over the place. But definitely the first portion of the movie, there were a lot of highlights for me, but then there was a lot of time where I was just like, man, this sucks. Like, not that the movie sucks, but like just the situations that are going on. Mm -hmm. But I feel like everything really came together in the back half when we really got into the thick of it with the trial. It's not really a trial, whatever it was, yeah. of Oppenheimer and of uh, Strauss. But I think some of the highlights for me, there was a couple of like moments where I was like, this is incredible. One of them was Casey Affleck's character, Boris Pash. Just like the fear when Oppenheimer was trying to like subtly give a hint for communism, but then it was just like, why would you give like a little crumb? Cause now he's gonna want everything. Mm -hmm. I feel like that opened up a big can of worms and that was just like such a tense moment. Yeah, the speech after the bombing yes. um, that Oppenheimer gave, that was the, f I think that was the first time, maybe it wasn't, maybe we did see something earlier on um, with just like kind of the, like the sound design of everything and the, the like repetitive noise that you're hearing. And then the kind of movements that we were seeing in the background. Yeah. Like everything that was happening, it honestly made it so difficult to focus. And I think that was exactly obviously the intention of what they were trying to do. But imagine just trying to give a speech to all of these people while all of these things are going on. Yeah. And we got that again during the trial. But in that moment, like obviously it's supposed to kind of represent the aftermath of the bombing. Um, you hear it, you hear like this like lead up to it and then it's silence. There's nothing. And then all of a sudden it's just the light. Yeah. Um, and obviously we kind of have that graphic moment um, with that woman, like her skin. Peeling um, off. Yeah, and then we had the uh, burnt uh, corpse. Yeah. So that moment was just like, whoa. I think that was probably one of the best moments in yeah. the whole movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think it's just tied in with expert filmmaking and the sound design yeah. was incredible. Throughout the entire movie, the this, sound was spectacular. I was gonna say that. The sound design in this, the the sound design and the music like in combination. Right. I think that was top notch in this film. Yeah, it, that blew me away multiple times. Uh, another moment that I really love was the introduction and most all conversations between Oppenheimer and uh, Matt Damon's character. Oh, the um, general. Yeah, General Leslie. They just had such a great connection and back and forth and, you know, going through building Los Alamos was spectacular. It's crazy that like a movie about Oppenheimer that also ties in with like World War II and the atomic bombs and stuff that I could be so amazed by the speech or conversations with this general or this mm -hmm. individual or these trials of people that I, I wasn't anticipating like this movie to have this trial aspect. I have uh, a horrible memory. I do love history, but I have a horrible memory. So I don't know any of this. So there was so many like shocking twists and turns for people who probably, if you had the slightest amount of history knowledge, you'd be like, yeah, duh. I saw yeah, that coming. This is what's coming. <laughs> yeah, but for, at least for me. No, for me too. And I'm I'm not going to say that. I know I understand. You don't need to tell me. I understand that it's very important. History? I am not. Like, I don't. <laughs> I don't care. It was always my worst subject in school, minus Spanish. Like, I just. Yeah. History has never been something that interests me. Now that we've watched so many movies and everything, like, I think it's so cool, but. That's just my perception, yeah, no, I guess. Yeah. But I do know it's important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people are still gonna say so. <laughs> but we also just recently watched um, JFK. Yes. So the fact that obviously JFK is someone in here, in here who kind of stops Strauss's nomination yeah. to the cabinet. Yeah, that tie-in was cool. But JFK also made me so much more of a conspiracy theorist. Literally the first thing my mind went to was like, oh, it was Strauss. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm like, so fuck the government. <laughs> like, Don't say that on YouTube. Oh my God. If Maybe I shut down our channel. Yeah, if our channel disappears, conspiracy, conspiracy theorist. <laughs> no, but like, I was getting so frustrated. Yeah. 
of just the government aspect because it is not difficult to see that perspective from Oppenheimer. Like him making the atomic bomb, you can understand why he had to do that when you're in a race with the Nazis. Mm -hmm. And then him being like, cool, I made it. Let's not use this mm -hmm. like after displaying its power. Mm -hmm. Let's use that and work with the everyone on the planet to look at that and be like, yeah, let's never do that again. That makes sense. Like, this is not some crazy radical idea, but this political game that just destroyed his reputation, at least for a time being, I feel like that ties in with Kitty being like, you let them tar and feather you, hoping that it would make you feel better or for like forgiveness or mm -hmm. like people would forgive you. And then Oppenheimer was like, well, let's see. And I feel like fast forward to now, obviously doesn't not all the way till right now happened a while ago, but I feel like history is now coming to the right conclusion that, you know, Oppenheimer was not some Russian spy communist and that there was individuals who are playing a political game that were just trying to fuck one of our greatest minds for some cabinet position. Yeah. No, I mean, the, the politics in pretty much everything is what destroys everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, politics is is rough. I mean, it has its purpose, but when people can just work together, you get a hell of a lot more done instead of trying to, for all these individual achievements or this side and that side and stuff. But this movie was pretty hard on the anti-government to a certain degree um, for certain people. Like uh, the brief moments with like Truman. That was something, that scene, there was so much tension. And first of all, Gary Oldman, that yeah. was crazy. Um, JFK, he did it. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess I just didn't really picture a conversation between Oppenheimer and Truman. Like, I kind of just imagined it being like a, thank you so much for your service and blah, blah, blah. Like a very like generic kind of. Like a Forrest Gump type of like, hey, thanks. Keep it moving. Exactly. Like I wasn't expecting them to actually talk about anything of value. Um, so for him to ask Oppenheimer and I mean, he kind of opened up that like line of questioning, but you know, Oppenheimer brought up his thoughts and for him to just minimize it and then uh, then call him a crybaby as he's like leaving the room. I don't know, people are going to remember the person who dropped it. Yeah. I don't know. I, I Again, I know nothing about Truman, but damn, that was bad. I also loved the development of uh, Senate aide. It just says Senate aide. Alden Ehrenreich. Han Solo. <laughs> he played Han Solo, and I think he hates that, and everyone hated it. Uh, but he crushed it in this. I loved that back and forth um, between him and Robert Downey Jr. I want to know, like, I'm gonna look that up. Was it him who, like, how the hell did um, Rami Malek, uh, David Hill, like he just came in and just destroyed Strauss. Yeah. Was it the aide? Like once the aide found out that he was kind of being played a little yeah. bit by Strauss, did, was the aide like, fuck you, dude. I don't know. I mean, it seems like the science community was already pissed pissed about it, but did he have some like small Push part or of getting him the floor? I don't know. Something because he was dropping information like Strauss orchestrated this and everyone was just like, whoa. And it was like, how would he know that? Yeah, and it's so funny because early on in the film, we were talking about uh, Rami Malek like not having- <laughs> Not having a single word. Yeah, he hadn't said anything. And we were like, oh my God, like, but I mean, this film is obviously full of like a gigantic cast. Yeah. But he killed it at the end. Like that was so satisfying to watch. And then that moment uh, where Strauss is just sitting there waiting to hear if, he was approved. Yeah. Between David Hill and the aide, like, oh, that was so satisfying. Yeah. Especially because like Strauss was so worked up on like, what did he say to Einstein and stuff? And for the aide to be like, maybe they were talking about something more important than you. And, yes. then, and then it goes to that conversation. I loved that. And that conversation was so good. Like that really was like a highlight 
of the movie for me was the conversation between Einstein and Oppenheimer. And it was such like a natural conversation. But then when you think of the stakes of all of these things that these two men accomplished in their lives, like yeah. it just puts the whole thing into a different perspective. Yeah, no, I mean, that was wild, a wild conversation. And I feel like that was another highlight was just the culmination of so many brilliant minds mm -hmm. together. And I mean, that comes to life because this was such an, an amazingly stacked cast. Yeah. And everyone had a fantastic performance. So good. Everybody in this was amazing. Um, and I want to touch on also Emily Blunt. Yes. She is the epitome of like, I want to say supportive wife. There's like something else. There's a different word that I want to- Ride or die? Yeah, like a ride or die, but there's a different word that I'm trying to think of. But essentially like she will be that grudge holder for him. Yes. And we saw that there at the very end when it came to Teller. Yeah, shaking Teller's hand. I just loved it. And obviously she was dealing with a lot of things. Um, we saw a lot of moments of anger and the moments of sadness, uh, finding out Oppenheimer had been unfaithful. Right. Like, there were so many different things um, that she went through and just with the kids, just so many different things. But to see the way that she was in that like trial and the end there with Teller, like there was just so many moments where I was just like, yes. Yeah, no, uh, Kitty uh, Emily Blunt was amazing in this. And yeah, I mean, especially how she pushed back on Roger during the trial was Fantastic. I wish she was there. She was there for a good portion of it. Yeah. But I wish she like also represented Oppenheimer because there could have been a different outcome. Um, oh no, I liked uh... uh yeah, I mean it was just so rigged. I mean yeah. that was a sham. Yeah. Garrison was great. He just I mean, he that was a losing battle no matter yeah. what. Yeah, I mean he tried and he had his moments in the trial. Um, but yes, I I loved Emily Blunt. Kitty was fantastic. Um, and just to see her like passion. For everything and and just wanting to stand up for Oppenheimer um so that whole conversation where they were sitting on the couch and she's she ends up throwing the bottle really getting her point across that like Strauss yeah come on people right yeah come on we got to fight here and this is the enemy yeah I could appreciate a lot of it but it didn't fully capture me and I feel like that last hour or so just tied everything together and I was like I see it now. Yes. I see the big picture and I love it. And I immediately want to watch it again. Not only do I want to watch it again, but I want to do a hell of a lot of like deep dive information yeah. on my own to really like see who these people are yeah. and then watch it like a third time. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like we've, we've done Patton, we did JFK and now Oppenheimer. And I feel like there's just so much that now I do want to learn. History. History. <laughs> and they all seem to... Kind of connect. Well, not Patton. Eh? World War II? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess. Patton was like, you know, fuck certain things also. <laughs> We've had a lot of World War II on this channel. A lot of, and yeah, and Master of the Air going on at the same time. Yeah. Lots of World War II, lots of history, lots of military and government and politics. And I feel like everything in common is all of these shady dealings type of thing that are honestly just super frustrating. Like where would we be as a society if we weren't constantly trying to fuck each other over? That's my that's my takeaway from JFK, Oppenheimer and Patton is we could all be significantly better. Yeah, I think that's the, uh, the issue <laughs> that humans have. But I was very excited to watch this film. Obviously this is in like the height of award season. Get this viewing in prior to the Oscars. Yeah, cause I don't even know what the Oscar nominations are. Mm -hmm. Like I don't even know what the other movies would be in contention with this. I mean, we're so like, we're so out of the loop on like current movies. And I feel like mostly because of this channel. Yeah. But obviously the buzz around Oppenheimer in general I was ready to watch this. I could see this dominating a lot too. I mean, it has already right. for what's gone on before. For other awards, but for yeah. Oscars, at least, I don't even know if Emily Blunt's nominated, but she should be. But I think uh, a no brainer has to be the sound. Yeah. It has to be. Yeah, no, we gotta look at the nominations for sure. Obviously we're filming this couple of weeks before the Oscars. I see it, I get it. 
<laughs> I get the hype and another incredible Christopher Nolan film. Yeah, an incredible Christopher Nolan film. Just a great picture. We've said it before, but these long movies, they're always so daunting. It's a gargantuan task to kind of edit this down. There's gonna be so much cut out, but it always is worth it. Yeah. Like, I don't think we've seen a very long movie and been disappointed. No. Yeah, so if you have like an almost three hour runtime, it's like a certified banger. <laughs> so this was great. <laughs> Yeah, this was awesome. So thanks everyone that recommended this to us. Obviously also just with the time of Oscars, um, but this was incredible. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on any other types of social media, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, peace everyone. Bye. Bye. We said bye, but <laughs> right when we said bye, we're like, wait a second, one more thing. Killian Murphy. Incredible. Um, I mean, I don't know anything about Oppenheimer, like the real Oppenheimer no. in terms of like his mannerisms or what he looks like or anything like that. No idea. But I assume that Killian killed it. And even if he's totally off, like a lot of people said that uh, George C. Scott is nothing like Patton. Like oh, Patton like is nothing voice. like Patton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if this is nothing like Oppenheimer, I won't accept it. <laughs> this is our Oppenheimer This now. is our Oppenheimer. <laughs> but yeah, no, he was incredible in watching the progression of age um, and those moments like we talked about in like the, you know, overwhelming. Turmoil, like what, what did I do type of thing. Yes, incredible. As always. Yeah, more Killian. Peaky Blinders, something that we've never watched, TV show with him yeah. in it. We've, got, we've had that recommended. Yes, we uh, have. You know, it might just be worth it just for Killian alone. Yeah. So, amazing. Bye. Bye.